They do have skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. Transparency NZ investigate and monitor actual corruption and publish evidence of IT. IT is clear that the media have a major role in controlling the perception of corruption, as the Levison inquiry revealed, the media is certainly not infallible, and as the Kitteridge report revealed, the relationship between the media and politicians is incestuous and nepotistic. To the office of the Prime Minister, we refer to documents recently released by the Ministry of Health and previous correspondence and communications between us and your office regarding complaints about the organization known as Nahau Iwa and the individuals associated with it, including Victoria Roberts, Jack Wilde, and Tui Torua. We refer to the document H20190186 8 Appendix 1A, https slash slash fyi dot org dot nz slash request slash 9896 slash response, page 28, a report to the Frozen Funds Charitable Trust, which includes a copy of a letter to the Prime Minister dated Thursday, February 15, 2018 from Tui Toru of Ihova. This letter refers to another letter which was allegedly handed to you by Jack Wilde, and allegedly signed by him and Victoria Roberts, and which Jack Wilde allegedly handed to the Prime Minister during a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Jacinda Ardern in which he claims that the Prime Minister made him an offer and said certain things, according to information recently released by the Ministry of Health, who are funding these deluded individuals. We request all information you hold regarding these letters and any information you hold regarding the individuals named in this request, particularly the ones who signed the letters, Tui Toru of Ihopa, Jack Wilde, and Victoria Roberts. Here are the emails etc. in their entirety so interested persons can judge for themselves. We emailed the office of the Prime Minister and asked if they had responded to the letter which Jack Wilde claimed to have handed to Jacinda Ardern during a 15-minute one-on-one he allegedly had with her, only to be informed by the office of the Prime Minister that they had no knowledge of any such letter. They informed us that they had, however, received the following letter from Tui Torua, we were shocked to read these letters and the claims therein. We challenged a number of the claims, including the ones made in the letter from Tui Torua. We were present during the entirety of this way and there were no mandates whatsoever given to Tui Torua or anyone else from Nahau Iwa, and the claims to have mandates to speak for 4IWI is completely and utterly delusional, as is the claim to be a clinician, which was made in Tui's profile on the Nahau Iwa website, the version of the letter reproduced above can be verified at page 22 of the attachment H20180186 8 Appendix 1G. The version below, which was changed, inadequately, in response to our challenge, is at page 32 of the attachment H20190186 8 Appendix 1A. Here's Jack Wilde's email to Amanda Luckman of the Ministry of Health, both he and Tui Toru are clearly dangerously delusional, exploiting and deceiving those they claim to advocate for and speak for, etc. as Kamatwa and Kuya of TET Marie at Wait and G who were present in the Huare Tu Puna the entire time these events are alleged to have taken place, we hereby state that the Huay described by Tui Toru and Jack Wilde was largely nothing but a figment of her imagination. She and her mate Jack Wilde presented a short coro during the usual ceremonies, there was no support for their obvious desire for a mandate, and no mandates were given to them whatsoever by the Tamata or anyone else in authority. At the bottom of the page Ms. Toru of Ihopa claims that there were several resolutions passed at this way, and we hereby state that is a lie. We were there the whole time. If we were in the Huare during the three days Ms. Toru claims these events took place. She was given no mandates whatsoever. We now refer to other apparent lies. The document released by the ministry titled H20190186 8 Appendix 1G, https slash slash fyi.org.nz slash request slash 9896 slash response, and page 22 of 56 contains another copy of the same letter but it is a remarkably different letter to that produced in the above mentioned document. In particular, 
The letter produced in Document Appendix 1A claims a mandate was given for Ms. Toru of Ihopa to represent Ngapuai, while the document in Appendix 1G clearly states that she claims she was given a mandate to speak not only for Ngapuai, but for Tainui, Tuoi, and Ngadi Poro as well. This is outrageous. We have evidence from these IWI that she has no mandate such as that claimed and we confirm that no mandate were given to her whatsoever and nobody other than the deluded and gullible were persuaded by her Koro to support her initiatives regarding mental health care, treatment, support, and advocacy, she has no credibility whatsoever when the evidence is evaluated. We request a copy of the letter you actually received and all information you and your offices hold regarding this matter. Furthermore, we draw your attention to page 16 of 56 in that same document, Appendix 1G. This is a letter to Amanda Luckman of the Ministry of Health, in which Jack Wilde claims he had a 15-minute one-on-one meeting with you at Wait NG and he handed you another letter, and alleges that you made him an offer and said certain things. Please note that both these bogus letters claimed that there was a list of Huawei attendees attached and that they all supported the letters you allegedly received. That is a lie. The attendees knew nothing about these letters. This organization and the other entities is has morphed into continue to refuse to provide us with the document cited, the one we signed and which contains our contact information and other personal information. We request all information your office holds regarding these matters and this request is urgent, we've been requesting you to address this matter since February 2018. We draw your attention to the letter to Tui Torua from the Minister of Health, warning her of a $10,000 fine for impersonating a clinician, and thereby presenting a danger to vulnerable mental health patients through her fraudulent misrepresentation, and the letter to Victoria Roberts from Changing Minds confirming the dysfunctional relationships and ongoing funding fraud. The need for urgency is clearly evident from the information released by the Ministry and our own investigations, which will be updated at the website http colon slash slash psychiatriccary.blogspot.com. If we'd known about this we would have told them to sit down and shut up, or get out, when they began their devious and manipulative coro in our Huare to Puna. The only people giving this lot a mandate is the government. They are not a peer support group at all, they are in the business of exploiting their peers for profit. Monday, September 9th. 2019 Changing Minds drops NHEW after fraudulent funding application, it is utterly unacceptable for the ministry to continue to fund NHEW, or any organization associated with the individuals involved in this matter, these people are liars and con artists, they are unprofessional and incompetent, and they are committing ongoing funding fraud. There is now considerable evidence of their fraudulent actions and it will be republished here because it is in the public interest to know that the government continues to enable and support these people in spite of this evidence. Nahao Iwa has never even been a legal entity, despite Victoria Roberts, the chairperson, boasting about all her dubious qualifications, apparently they can't get there together to form an actual legal entity, despite receiving such huge amounts of funding. No worries said Kev, Kevin Harper of the Ministry of Health, we'll just arrange for another organization, perhaps, mental health advocacy and peer support, another organization getting government funding to provide the lucrative mental health support. This peer support is a joke. It's just a few of the people who have been causing the problem masquerading as the solution. You see, the ringleader of this little circus, Victoria Roberts, has another job. She only does this on the side. Her main job is mental health advocate for the Health and Disability Commission. The fox in charge of the hen house. Here is an email to Victoria Roberts, dated November 2017, informing her that the board of trustees of the organization which has been channeling the funding for this non-entity at the time, Changing Minds, another little mental health initiative that's largely a huge waste of time, is directing CM to sever their relationship with Victoria and her little peer support group, because of fraudulent funding applications. It refers to a complete lack of processes and procedures, before ending with a request that nobody from Victoria's group contact or engage directly with Changing Minds staff, 1, 
and here is the letter to Victoria Roberts, boss of this supposed peer support network calling itself Nahau Iwa. These so-called peer support organizations are lining their own pockets, not supporting their peers at all, they are betraying their peers, lying to them, lying on their behalf, and committing funding fraud, that's called stealing, isn't it? Scrolling down to page 41 of 56 viewers can read the rubbish written by Jack Wilde about his little one one with the Prime Minister at Wait NG, and the lies he tells about his little three day away at Wait NG, which are discussed in previous posts. The Prime Minister's office have said in writing that they can locate no such letter as that which Jack Wilde reckons he handed to the Prime Minister during their 15 minute one on one but then they provided us with the other letter from Tui Turua claiming a mandate for Ngapuai, Tui, Tainui, and Ngadi Poro. It is evident by the information released that an edited copy of the letter was subsequently provided by several people including Tui herself, Jack Wilde, Guy Baker etc., and lauded as evidence of the great relationships Nahau Iwa had allegedly established with their peer networks and the Prime Minister. All based on lies and delusions. Back to the Health and Disability Commission. They apparently see nothing wrong with this. Here is their response to these complaints. No worries says Kev Harper of the ministry, we'll just ditch maps and leave them with egg all over them and we'll set you up with some nice new funding under the umbrella of Guy Baker, another one of the ringleaders of this fiasco and another principal representative of Nahau Iwa. Guy apparently runs a trust called T.E. Kupanga and the ministry is now giving the money to Guy to give to Victoria and Jack and Tui and the rest of these liars and thieves. This is how our taxes are being spent, and this is why we've got a mental health crisis. Read all out it at this link to the FYI website, there's a lot of information in the release, with several appendices, the letter above is in appendix G at page 39 of 56 https slash slash psychiatric carry dot blogspot dot com slash twenty nineteen slash zero nine slash mental health advocacy and peer support dot html update april twenty second twenty twenty the ministry of health are becoming more dysfunctional instead of less today they released the report below in a very heavily redacted fashion the redactions alter the entire meaning of the report and are clearly an attempt to whitewash the stinking pile of corruption and incompetence. The latest letter and the redacted version of this report is at this link. This report clearly shows that NHEW are dysfunctional, unprofessional, and a waste of space. It can also be viewed at this link. Scroll down to page 101. The fact that the ministry is now trying to conceal the contents of this report is a clear indication that they have no intention of holding Nahau Iwa to account. The deranged and delusional text messages from the ministry official slash advisor confirm that the lunatics are running the asylum at the Ministry of Health. Parliament is looking into how to improve the mental health system. Time to up the meds perhaps. Right.